everyone and welcome to this week's video. Now I have this series going of different ways that you can increase the horsepower of your car. Uh, but one of the questions I think I need to answer is how does increasing horsepower affect the acceleration of your car? So that's what I'm going to attempt to answer in this video is how more horsepower translates into faster acceleration. So to start off we're going to have to set some variables here and uh, we're just going to say we've got a truck or car or whatever and it produces 300 horsepower uh, that's its peak horsepower at 5,252 RPM. Uh, so because of that, uh, a video you may want to watch before this is uh, horsepower versus torque. And in that video I kind of explain um, where all this is going to be coming from. But basically, 300 horsepower at 5,252 RPM translates into 300 uh, pound-feet of torque. And we're just going to say that this 300 pound-feet of torque is constant across the entire RPM range. That isn't true, really, but uh, for the purposes of this video, we'll just say that that is the average torque across the entire RPM range. <clears throat> so, we're, our vehicle is going to be 6,000 pounds, pretty heavy. Um, first gear is going to be a 4 to 1 gear ratio. The differential is going to have a 3.5 to 1 gear ratio, and our wheel is going to have a diameter of 24 inches. So, Starting off, we, we know what we want to find is acceleration, and Newton tells us that force equals mass times acceleration. So, acceleration equals force divided by mass. <clears throat> so, if we have, so next what we want to do is find the torque at the wheels. So, we know our torque is 300 uh, pound-feet, and we know our gear ratio is 4 to 1 and 3.5 to 1. So, all we need to do is multiply the torque by the gear ratio. 300 times 4 times 3.5 4,200 pound-feet of torque. All right, now our, what we want to do is find the force, this F right here. So we know that torque is equal to force times distance. So force is equal to torque divided by the distance. We know our torque from the previous step, and the distance is the, the distance at which that torque is applied. So it's going to be from the center of the wheel to touching the road. So since we have a 24 diameter wheel, that'll be the radius of that. 12 inches. <clears throat> so 12 inches, we want to turn that into feet, so we divide it by 12, not inches, just, yeah, 12 inches in a foot, so divide by 12, um, and then you get 4,200 divided by 1, so our force is 4,200 uh, pound force. <clears throat> so acceleration equals force divided by mass, that's our equation up here, 4,200 uh, pound force divided by 6,000 pounds, that's going to give us an acceleration of 0.7 g's, which is actually really quick. Um, and so now what we want to do is figure out, well, what does that mean? Uh, pretty much everyone's only interested in things like 0 to 60 times. Um, now, we're just going to calculate at 20 miles an hour how quick it, it takes, how long it takes to get to 20 miles an hour. So we know velocity equals acceleration times time. So if we know we want to get to 20 miles an hour, now the reason I picked 20 miles an hour is because this is our peak RPM, our red line basically is going to be 5252. So if you have a 24 inch uh, diameter wheel and it can, with this gear ratio uh, and this red line, its maximum speed in first gear is going to be something like 26 or 27 miles an hour. Um, if you haven't watched my video on car gears, that would explain basically where that number would come from, that 26 or 27 miles an hour, but basically uh, we can't get up to 60 miles an hour, so that's why I just chose a lower number, 20 miles an hour. So, 20 miles an hour is 29.3 uh, feet per second. So, when we do the division here, 29.3 feet per second divided by 0.7 g's, or 0.7 times 32.2 feet per second squared. 1 g is 32.2 feet per second squared uh, in good old English American units, or whatever you want to say. Um, so that gives us 1.3 seconds. Okay, now, that's if our car had 300 horsepower, peak of 300 horsepower, and a constant uh, 300 pound-feet of torque as a result of that. So if we change our peak horsepower to 400 horsepower, and we say that torque is also equivalent throughout the entire RPM range, that gives us 400 pound-feet of torque, and if we do step two, we're going to get 5,600 pound-feet of torque, um, I didn't write out all the equations, but basically you're just plugging in 400 there. So step three, we're going to have 5,600 uh, pound force. Uh, step four, it's going to give us 0.93 g's, which is very good acceleration. Now, there's not many cars that 
are going to get anywhere near to doing that, but um, you know the nice cars out there can do it. Uh, and then step five is we'll find the time that it takes to get to 20 miles an hour, so 0.98 seconds. So about uh, three tenths of a second difference to 20 miles an hour, which is actually a pretty pretty big difference um, with a 100 horsepower increase. So one of the things I wanted to kind of enable you guys to do uh, with this is to calculate your own theoretical zero to 60 times of your cars. So all you would need is an average torque across your RPM range. And obviously this is going to be an estimation because there's not really such an accurate statement out there. Uh, no one, none of the engine manufacturers are going to say, here's your average torque. But they may give you something like an available 200 pound-feet of torque from this RPM to this RPM. So you can use that. So you get that, or estimate it, um, and then you're going to need your gear ratios, your red line, and your tire radius. Uh, and you can calculate with that your top speed per gear. So if, if you don't really understand how to do that, I've got a video called Car Gears. Um, you can check that out and it'll explain how to get the top speed per gear. Now, let's say for example you have a car that's first gear ends at 30 miles an hour and its second gear ends at 65 miles an hour or something. And you want to calculate the 0 to 60. Well, you'll just take uh, the 0 to 30 time, which was done through the same equations we've got here. Uh, in first gear, you'll take the 0 to 30 time in second gear, the 0 to 60 time in second gear, and the time that it takes to shift gears between first and second. So, uh, what you'll do then to calculate your 0 to 60 time, you'll have x, the time it takes to get to 30, plus n, the time it takes to shift gears, plus z minus y, which is the time it takes to get from 30 to 60 miles an hour. And that will give you a theoretical time for, for your car, any car, um, perhaps you're modeling something, uh, the time that it would take for it to get 60 miles an hour, uh, which is also relatively close to um, 100 kilometers an hour if you wanted to do everything in metric. Uh, that's about 62 miles an hour. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.